Rosebuds, welcome back to my channel. If you're looking to move across the country out of your little hometown or to a super big city or maybe all three, yeah, you can do all three. Stay tuned. There are a few steps you need to make before taking that leap and moving somewhere new. The first step is make a decision. I know this sounds super cliche, but none of this is gonna work unless you make a concrete decision that you are going to move, whether that be because of a job or because you simply wanna move to a new city. It all starts with a decision. You need to be sure that this is happening by any means necessary. Give yourself at least minimum four to six months to start planning. Do not move. Well, if you got it like that, but give yourself at least four to six months of planning before you decide to take the leap and move. Step two is do your research. Research is your friend in this moment, you guys. You need to find out, okay, what location do I wanna stay in? What neighborhood in that location do I wanna stay in? Is there public transportation in this place or will I need a car? These things are major factors in your decision of where you wanna move and why you wanna move there. I had a friend, he moved to New York City, I mean, of course, New York City, but he moved to New York City and he took his car and he never touched his car once. So what did he do? He had to get his, he had to get his car shipped back to Mississippi. Don't put those expenses on yourself, y'all. Don't do that. If you're planning on moving to New York or maybe even DC, figure out the proximity of everything. Also do in-depth research on the internet. Get on YouTube, go through Google, find reviews, find out what do people know that you don't know. Do your research on housing. Are you looking to stay in a house? a townhouse, a condo, or an apartment? What's the average rent range for the type of housing you're looking at? Will you need a roommate? If so, you may want to start looking now. If you can, find out those random things that people who live there know that you don't entirely know. Like, a friend once told me who lived in Orlando that it rains at two o'clock every single day in Orlando. I would never know that, but I'd definitely be in for an unpleasant surprise with my natural hair and all, you know, my edges, my edge control or whatever. I'd be in for a very, very unwelcoming surprise if I went there and I realized it's raining at two o'clock every single day. But on the flip side, I moved to LA and I kind of got a taste of it. Um, when I visited here in February, or it wasn't even February, it was March, but it is August right now. And when I say it's cold at night, y'all, it's cold at night and early in the morning. Like you need a jacket jacket, not, not like a little play jacket. Like you need a jacket jacket. It's only summertime in the middle of the day in LA. So I get it now. If you ever wonder why celebrities look like they're dressing up for the wintertime in the summertime, it's because it actually feels like wintertime here at night, like 62 degrees, stuff like that. That's crazy. That didn't happen to me when I lived in DC. Uh, in DC. That didn't happen to me when I lived in Mississippi. Also, you guys, do your research on movers. You can go to websites like moving.com or longdistancemover.org to find moving companies and you don't have to do any of the reaching out. All of these companies will begin emailing you and calling you with all these different quotes, but do not, I repeat, do not go along with the first company you speak with. The first company I spoke with, they were gonna charge me $3,000 to move my stuff from DC to LA. That's a lot of money. What? That's a lot of money. But after going through a few companies, I found the best one. I found a company that only charged me $1,500 to move my stuff from DC to LA. These are the things you need to know because if you don't know, you will be getting played. They will suck the money out of you. Also, don't say it's your first move. Don't say that. They'll really try you then. Number three, save. All of your hard research and decision making goes down the toilet 
if you don't have the funds to make the move a reality. Analyze the numbers you saw in the rent range prices. Uh, think about the numbers the movers gave you. Think about mystery expenses and I promise they come up. Uh, your plane ticket and even living money. If you have a job waiting for you, maybe just one month of rent and one month of living expenses. That's enough. But if you don't have a job waiting on you, you probably need to save at least two months of rent, at least to, not at most y'all, at least two months of rent and two months of living expenses, especially depending on what your resume looks like, who you know. So all of these numbers with all of these expenses could easily run you up to $10,000, but that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money y'all. I did not save $10,000 for my move to LA. But I would suggest you saving at least $5,000 just to be comfortable so you know you aren't begging people or stranded or just starving or, or getting kicked out of your lease that you just moved into. You don't want to run into those problems. So save up enough money for your essentials, for possible screw-ups, and for living expenses. And if you're lucky, you won't have any possible screw-ups or mysterious expenses, as we call them. And they go back to pocket money. Another cool way to save is by using apps. I personally use an app called Digit, and it's really cool because it does the work for you. Connect it to your bank account, and it begins saving based on the amount of money in your bank account, so it's never pulling out way too much and way too little. It'll just take money out daily. I think it skips the weekends, but it'll take money out daily of your bank account. It'll stop taking money out at a limit you decide for it to stop taking money out. And it'll also put your rainy day funds that is saved for you into your account automatically. So it kind of has your back there too. I wouldn't put all my eggs in this basket, but it can definitely help you with maybe your movers or maybe your mysterious expenses. Don't put all your eggs in this basket. However, if you wanna pull out a lump sum and put it in digit because you don't wanna open a savings account, that's another route. Number four, apartment or house hunting. Use websites like apartments.com or Zillow. They'll really help you out. I actually found my current apartment and my last apartment on apartments.com. They have really nice 3D tours and everything. So I like that format a little bit better than Zillow, but Zillow is still really good and it appears more people post on Zillow than on apartments.com. But if you're going the roommate route, you may want to find Facebook groups or uh, it's a touchy one, but get on Instagram, you never know. But you may want to just find people and see who's subleasing or if there's a lease you can take over. Look at the colleges around the town. A lot of college students do these types of moves, so they're more willing to sublease to you and they're also the main people subleasing and leasing out. College people, people in their 20s around that age range, so you may actually be living with people in your age range, which is always a plus. Also, look at the outside area, like the surrounding area on Google Maps. You don't want any surprises, especially if you're unable to visit. I've also heard of some people who completely ignore this route, they don't do it. They move to the location that they have to move to, they Airbnb for a few weeks, find a hotel, do what they gotta do, and find a place during that one, two week span. That's another option, it's not for me, I can't deal with that insecurity or lack of security, that's a better word. I can't deal with that lack of security while going through such a huge life transition, such as a move. But if it works for you, girl, it works. I will note that I did stay in an Airbnb the first three days of moving to LA, but I knew I had my apartment lined up to move in that Saturday. Number five, go visit or not. If you're unable to visit the place you want to live, that's totally cool. Google Maps, the satellite view to street view, it's a blessing. Technology. It's a blessing and a curse. But the things you want to check after you find your place are nearby grocery stores, gyms, gas stations if you're driving. These are the things you're going to want to know. Or even a pharmacy. You want to know these things, you guys. You want to know what's around you before you move. With the grocery stores, let's say you're vegan like me. I'm vegan. 
and it's hard to find vegan stuff in some of these grocery stores out here because I didn't stay ready. When you stay ready, you ain't gotta get ready. And I'm still over here trying to get ready, which is crazy because I'm in LA. I should be able to find a vegan grocery store on every corner, but that's not the case. So visiting is totally optional. You do not have to. Will you get a better feel for the place? Of course, you're there in person. Online, nothing online feels the same as in person but it's still optional some people i'm some people don't want to cough up that plane ticket money to go look at the place they're going to be living or just the location the area and would rather just get on google maps or use my iphone and just see how far stuff is number six packing in my opinion the most sensible way to pack and it's not the most cost efficient i'll admit that Pack your own stuff, pack your own household items and your clothes, like you can do that you guys, you can, come on, you can pack that stuff. Pack that yourself and have the movers do all the heavy duty work, like your bed, your couch, your tables, things like that. Have them pack that up. It won't be the cheapest option, but it also won't be the most expensive option. In my opinion, it's also, is it strange to have movers come in through your house and just like pack all your stuff, going through all your stuff, one by one, handsy. That's odd, you got, pack your own stuff. Hear me out on this one, oh, on at least this one, if you don't take anything from this video. Pack your own stuff. Let the movers do the heavy work. Packing is also the perfect time to downsize, so if you've been thinking about donating stuff or selling stuff, this is the time to do it. I do recommend selling some of your furniture if you can because maybe you can pocket that money. Remember that money we're saving up. You can pocket that money for your move. I kind of sold a few items in a really weird way, believe it or not. I hung a sign on my, well, I wrote a sign. I was too lazy to even type. That doesn't make sense. That doesn't make any sense. But I wrote out a sign and I stuck it to my apartment door. I don't know if all buildings will allow this, but they didn't trip in my apartment. And my neighbors just came by knocking. I put my number there. They would also text and just bought a few of my things. And that's cool. I didn't even have to go anywhere. They didn't even have to go anywhere. It was cheap. People like cheap and people like convenience. So sell to your neighbors. They want stuff. Your trash is another person's treasure. You've heard it. So after you've sold and donated a lot of things, of course it's still okay to keep selling and donating. This is the time you start packing. Go buy your boxes if the movers don't provide them and pack all of the stuff you're taking on the trip with you, like in your suitcases. Pack those things first with the exception of toiletries and your things you use daily that you're still gonna take on a trip with you. Therefore, you know, everything else in this place got to go some way or another. More than likely, hopefully, if you did this right, if you sold and donated your stuff first, everything else just needs to be packed. Number seven, business stuff. You guys, do not forget to forward your mail to your new apartment. Change your billing address on all your credit cards and debit cards. And don't forget to cut off your utilities and or transfer them to your new place. Oh, and renter's insurance. If you're a renter, if you're moving into an apartment, I'm not sure about renting houses. I've never done that. But if you're moving into an apartment, you're gonna need renter's insurance. So just get on that. It's really easy, it's really cheap. It does, I'm with State Farm and I definitely don't pay over $120 for like the whole year. Number eight, you're off. You're off on your new journey. Enjoy it. I hope you're happy with your new life, on your new chapter, new exciting things. You're flourishing, you're thriving, you did it. You saved up for your move, you made the decision and everything else that we talked about, you did it and now you're well on your way to moving and can't nobody tell you nothing about nothing unless, unless you need a co-signer on your apartment. That's a sticky conversation you may have to have with your parents, but that's just in the complexes I've lived in. I've lived in these, I'm not gonna lie, I've lived in some bougie apartments, y'all, and I had to have a co-signer. It is what it is. If you're living in a regular apartment for your 20s, which I probably should be doing, but I'm not. Anyway, if you're living in like a standard apartment 
and you have good enough income if you can be like two and a half two two and a half three times the rent those are the standards you're good you don't need nobody you're good and your credit is good you're good okay but if you don't meet those requirements get a co-signer um ask your parents ask a family member i know it gets weird when it's kind of outside of the immediate family but ask someone close to you to co-sign for you and don't mess them up pay your rent pay your bills do what you need to do come on you guys don't don't play in people's credit like that but that's it i hope you guys enjoyed this video please don't forget to subscribe and give it a thumbs up you know i love y'all rosebuds and i hope y'all's move goes so well Bye-bye.